The market is rapidly changing and you need to know where money is flowing in and out of. In this video, we're gonna go over different market caps and different parts of the market that are seeing inflows of cash and outflows. Could have been on Wall Street. Should have been on a ball team. Could give a fuck about your team. Cause I don't really feel none of y'all morphine. Wall Street. What's going on guys? Hamilton here with the Trading Initiative. And really quick before we start the video, if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. It would really help me out. So let's dive into it. We're going to start off with Coifin here because it's our absolute favorite analytical tool. If it's uh, if you've never heard of it, it's absolutely free. You can get the paid version if you want. I do pay for it, but this is part of the free functionality. If you like this stuff, I highly suggest going over to coifin.com, signing up for a free account and running through it. It really is a an edge for retail traders. It's a lot like a Bloomberg terminal, if you will. I have no affiliation whatsoever with Coifin, but everybody inside the trading initiative uses Coifin on a daily basis because it's an incredible piece of our trading repertoire and it gives us so many advantages and edges. So we're gonna start here with Coifin and we're actually just gonna focus on today's video on the size versus value portion of this um, factor analysis tab in Coifin. And what we're looking at right here is a year-to-date normalized performance against the S&P 500, different subsects of the market, right? We have large cap value, large cap growth, mid cap value, mid cap core, mid cap growth, small cap value, small cap core, and small cap growth. So realistically, nearly every single part of the domestic U.S. market we have uh, cut up and we are comparing it towards the performance of the S&P 500 on the year to date, and we will niche down into a lower time frame soon. But what we've noticed inside of TTI for approximately four, four to six weeks now has been a relative decline in strength across the board for value. Now, whether or not you want to chalk that up as specifically energy related, feel free. I think that you probably have an argument there to make. But for whatever reason, IVE being your large cap value uh, niche there had been showing incredible relative strength against the S&P 500, again, probably because of energy. Uh, and it was up, you know, 12.56% here against the S&P 500 as early as May 24th. But as we started to see energy start to capitulate, financials started coming down, materials finally broke out of that 400 plus day horizontal channel, the large cap value area started to break away from the relative strength that it had been showing the entire year. And since that May 24th high, we have been in a relative decline, right? We see a series of lower highs. We see a series of lower lows. And as of right now, we were only up 8.17% year to date against SPY. That's still great. But if we are looking to hypothesize where is the money flowing into and where is the money flowing out of, I think it's reasonable to say, considering this trend started on May 24th at that peak, that it has now been nearly two months straight of underperformance of large cap value against the S&P 500. And like I said, it shouldn't be a surprise here seeing as how energy has absolutely capitulated realistically since mid-May, late May here. It looks like XLE itself started to break down in June. So as energy, which had previously been propping up the market, um, uh, specifically the value market, considering financials, et cetera, had been breaking down. We can look at financials here as well. And then obviously materials with energy finally capitulating, we see that large cap value area really start to show weakness against the S&P 500, but it wasn't just large caps, right? We can see value starting to peak around the same area that May to June, beginning of late May, beginning of June, excuse me. We saw that relative weakness come down and all of a sudden we declined from you know, a max here at 10.22 all the way down to 5.84. So that's roughly a 50% loss against the S&P 500 year to date in a relatively short period of time. That's a big deal, right? That's something that we need to take into consideration as traders. Now we have started to horizontally channel and I do want to point out though that banks have started to show a little bit of strength post earnings, energy, not so much, materials, not so much, but banks are, and banks are a uh, you know, a decent sized uh, sliver, if you will, a niche of this mid cap value tranche. So relative weakness in the large cap value, relative weakness in mid cap value. And once again, we are going to look at um, small cap value here with IWN. And this is realistically where we're going to spend a lot of our time between looking at the small cap value and small cap growth in a second here. Small cap value topping out at around the same time here, June 10th at 7.91% year-to-date against the S&P 500. Once again, this is overloaded 
with uh, regional and community banks uh, showing uh, relative strength all year until all of a sudden they didn't, right? They capitulated along with everything else. And now we're only up 3.32 relative downtrend here over the last almost uh, month and a half, although we have started to horizontal channel off of some good ER, right? Bank ER was somewhere around right here. We can see that there has been a short-term pop-up in some of these uh, value areas that are more heavily weighted in financials than energy, okay? So the theme here is that money seems to be flowing out of the value area in mid-May to beginning of June and conversely flowing into the growth areas. And that's why I said we're gonna focus on that small cap value and small cap growth relationship. So we're gonna start off with, let me paint the picture. This is not a, a particularly um, you know, beautiful looking uptrend, right? We're not getting huge thrusts here, we're not getting huge moves, but this is a series of higher highs. So I'm gonna keep this highlighted for a second. I want you to notice that we bottomed around the same time that large cap value topped out. Mid-May, late May here, growth caught its bottom at down 11.19% against the S&P 500 year to date. So this is relative weakness against the benchmark, relative weakness against the major market indexes. We bottomed out and since then over the last almost two months, we are now down only 7.42%. So we've recovered about 4% against the S&P 500 while large cap value has declined. This is a shift Money is beginning to flow back into growth and away from value. We're coming up on the second month here. Let's check mid cap growth. It's been relatively constant. Now there's a lot of exposure to software related names within the mid cap growth space and software has been absolutely slaughtered this year. So to see it horizontally channel over the course of at the same time, large cap popping back up, that's decent. We're not rushing out and buying mid cap growth, but as long as this is not in a relative downtrend, we like this, okay? We're not rushing out and buying mid cap growth related names, those mid cap software related names that aren't hitting higher highs, et cetera. We're not buying those, but it's a piece of the overall puzzle. We're strictly looking at making sure there's no relative downtrend here. And then as always, the small cap growth, which is where a majority of the rest of the video is going to focus on, right? Small cap growth can be viewed as the most risk on area of the equities market, domestically speaking. It's a lot of absolute dumpster trash stocks. We have AMC, we have GameStop, things like this. They're gonna be shoved into the IWO um, ETF here. So think meme stocks and stuff like that. There's also a very, very large, um, exposure to biotech names. And if you've watched the previous videos, you know that biotech has been going absolutely nuts over the last five to six weeks, showing crazy relative strength. It's one of the few areas of the market that is actually hitting higher highs and th uh, showing thrusts, right? Brett thrusts, as well as higher highs. So IWO here, we bottomed out at the beginning of May. So I want you to look at this. We bottomed out prior to every other area of the market, this small cap growth. And in a market that is punishing risk on, right? And we understand that IWO, GameStop, AMC, biotech related names, these small cap growth names are the most risky parts of the equities market domestically speaking. We know that they should be leading in a market that is um, in a market that is punishing risk. IWO should be the leading uh, area of the market to the downside. That makes sense, right? You'd want to move away from the riskier parts of the market and you want to get involved in the less riskier areas if you're worried about what is going to happen with the market. Now, for whatever reason, on May 11th, the market changed tone. All of a sudden, they started rewarding risk. It's not up for us as technical traders to understand why. Why was May 11th, what happened on May 11th that changed investment attitude, behavioral sort of financial stuff. It's not up for us as technicians to understand why, but it is up for us to identify and potentially play that. And we have been, we have noticed that we peaked, or not peaked, well, inversely peaked on May 11th, down 17.12%. 7 and over the last two months-ish, we are now down only 10.27%. So we have rebounded nearly seven full percent and this was the first area of the market to do so in the growth side. And that's what we would expect, right? In a market that is punishing growth, in a market that is punishing risk for a majority of the year up until now, to see the riskiest parts of the market begin to show relative strength 
and then we see the mids and the large caps catch up. This is normal market fluctuations, money oscillating, flowing away from value and into growth. Okay, so we're actually gonna pull up on trading view really quick and I want you to look at two things. First off, IWN, this is your small cap value. This actually looks like a pretty decent bounce here off of this support at 135, 134.50, somewhere in there. RSI is above the 50, et cetera. If you would have bought IWN in the last three, four, five sessions, you probably would have made a couple bucks, but I wanna point something out. This is a great move off of a support, but right now we are only up around 6% off of the bounce, okay? So take that into consideration. We bounced around 134.50. We're currently at 142.19 because today is a drawback day across the board in the market. We'll say we're up 6% off of this bounce. Not bad, but we know IWN is showing relative weakness, right? If we go back to Coifin, we can actually single it out. IWN has been showing relative weakness since June 10th. We are consistently hitting lower highs and lower lows up until actually yesterday's session, but this is still a relative weakness in the market, we're still technically not in an uptrend, whereas IWO is, so there's weakness here within small cap value. Now, if we flip over and look at IWO, which is the small cap growth area, off of the lows in the middle of June, we are bounced 13.5%. So as IWN has only bounced 6%, IWO has bounced 13.5%. This is a big deal. Now, taking into consideration that these are normalized performances against the S&P 500, I wanna point something out. This is a little bit more advanced, so if you're within the trading initiative, you already understand this, but if you're a new viewer, I'm going to allow you to reflect on a more advanced concept here. The difference between normalized performance and absolute performance. Just because IWO bottomed out on May 11th against the S&P 500, or SPY, does not mean that on an absolute performance, right here, it's a buying opportunity, right? We are using multiple puzzle pieces to construct a theory. So when we identify areas on Coifin that go, hmm, this is different, we need to focus on this, then we would come over and look at IWO and we would look for potential buying opportunities and that's what we've actually been doing over the last week or two and not back on May 11th. So there is a big edge there in understanding the difference between normalized and relative performance and absolute performance, okay? So as of right now, to keep this video a little bit shorter, I could rant on this forever because I think this is a very important topic and a huge edge when you can identify areas of the market that are seeing flows of, flows of funds and outflows of funds. Value for right now is still in downtrends. That we've been in a downtrend for anywhere between four to eight weeks, depending on when you're looking, and growth has received more of the flow of funds than any other part of the market over the last four to eight weeks. All right. So as long as IWO is leading, right, as long as the market is going to continue to reward some of the riskier parts of the market, and I'm going to go ahead and show you AMC off of those Ju uh, July lows here up until obviously today's, like I said, is a drawdown day, but we are up 25%. GameStop off of the same area, the July lows, we are currently up 26%. These are big moves in meme stocks that just so happen to be a part of IWO. Okay, so what are we looking at inside of TTI? We're continuing to monitor IWO. We don't currently have any positions directly exposing us to this IWO area. We do not have any positions that are directly exposing us to IWN, but we are very aware of the relationship of what IWO and IWN mean for overall risk in the market, and we do have positions on right now that may be influenced by some of these moves. Not directly, we don't have direct exposure, but definitely we are monitoring these. So if you have any questions about this stuff, normalized and or relative performance against absolute, small cap and, and uh, uh, growth versus small cap value, or just the general idea of subsecting these small cap, uh, mid cap and large cap areas away from growth and value, et cetera, Mix, mixing and matching all of this information, feel free, leave comments below. I like to respond to them. And if you have any suggestions for additional videos, feel free, let me know. All right, catch you in the next video.